Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. So my name is Dr. Ahmad Razali bin Ishaq from Center of Environmental Health and Safety, Faculty of Health Sciences, University Technology Mara, Cawangan Puncak Alam. So today Well, we will proceed with lesson 4, preparation of liquid sample for organic analysis under the course of EMV460, analytical technique and instrumentation. Okay, as I told you in earlier lecture, it is very rare that environmental sample in either solid or liquid form can be directly injected into an instrument such as GC, HPLC, AAS without any pretreatment. So most of the sample, majority of the sample, require sample preparation method before analysis including for liquid sample. So today I am going to describe the preparation of liquid sample for organic analysis. Okay, this is our learning outcome for today's lesson. So after completing this module, students should be able to number one, describe the importance of sample preparation of liquid sample for organic compound. Number two, explain the principle of liquid-liquid extraction, solid phase extraction, SPE, and solid phase micro extraction, SPME. And finally, uh, at the end of this lesson, uh, students should be able to describe the typical procedure of LLE, liquid liquid extraction, solid phase extraction, SPE, and solid phase micro extraction, SPME, in safe and controlled manners. Okay, let's start with our first learning outcome. While sample preparation of liquid for organic analysis is very important. So sample preparation is required when the analyte is present at low concentration or trace concentration in a water sample such as a uh, river water or wastewater effluence for example we are going to detect the pesticide in river water sample from Cameron Highlands let's say so the the concentration of pesticide might be come from agriculture runoff and present in very trace amount. So in this case, sample preparation is used to pre-concentrate the analyte from a large volume of water into a small oval, into a small sample volume. So in addition, or at the same time, sample preparation can be used to clean up the analyte from its matrix. So the river matrix not only contain pesticide but also other pollutant extraneous material that can interfere with the analysis result so therefore sample preparation is very useful technique especially when dealing with organic trace analysis okay uh, basically there are three type of sample preparation method of liquid sample for organic analysis which is uh, liquid liquid extraction lle solid phase extraction spe and solid phase micro extraction spme okay we start first with liquid liquid extraction okay the principle of liquid liquid extraction lle is that the sample is distributed or partition between two immiscible solvents in which the analyte and matrix have different solubility. In other words, we can say that it is a method by which a compound is pulled from water in aqueous phase to organic solvent where water and organic solvent are not miscible. So you can see the appearance of two layers during the liquid-liquid extraction process at the equilibrium. So the main advantage of this approach, this LLE, is the wide availability of pure solvents such as we can use dichloromethane, we can use acetonitrile and methanol, and LLE can be conducted using a low cost separator such as by only using separating funnels. Okay, the selectivity and efficiency of liquid liquid extraction process is critically governed by the choice of the two immiscible solvent. One aqueous and another one is organic solvents. So the more hydrophobic analyte will prefer the organic solvent, while the more hydrophilic compound will prefer the aqueous phase. So the two common approach of a liquid liquid extraction, which is uh, number one is continuous and number two is discontinuous method. Okay, in discontinuous approach, uh, the extraction is carried out discontinuously 
where equilibrium is established between two immiscible phases. So you can see the appearance of two layers. However, in continuous approach, the equilibrium may not be reached. Okay. Okay, in this continuous extraction, the most common approach use a separating funnels. Okay, you can see from this picture. Okay, in this case, the echo sample, let's say one liter of sample at a specific pH based on the optimized condition, is introduced into a large separating funnel, usually two liter capacity with a Teflon stock cork. And then, uh, 60 ml of citrobin organic solvent, such as we use dichloromethane, is added. So the, ve the vessel is then sealed with a stopper and shaken vigorously. Either you can use man manually or mechanically for one to two minutes. So this shaking process allow interspersion between the two immiscible solvent, thereby maximizing the contact between the two solvent phases, and hence assisting mass transfer and thus allowing efficient partitioning to occur. So. Uh, it is necessary during the process, it is necessary to uh, periodically vent the excess pressure generated during the shaking process. Okay. Okay, after a suitable resting period, okay, the organic solvent is run off and retained in a collection flask. Okay, fresh organic solvent is then added again into the separating funnel and the process is repeated again. So this should be carried out at least three times in total, uh, three times at least. So the three organic extracts should be combined and either ready for direct analysis or pre-concentration with exact requirement depend upon the level of contamination. Okay. So this is the typical procedure of uh, discontinuous liquid-liquid extractions. So the same thing that I, that I have been mentioned in the previous slide, but maybe it's easier for the student to understand later by referring to this diagram. Okay? So in continuous uh, method, so another approach of liquid-liquid extraction is continuous method. Especially we use this when dealing with a very large samples. So in this situation, fresh, fresh organic solvent is boiled condense and allocate to percolate repetitively through the analyte containing aqueous sample. Two common version of continuous liquid extractors are available. Either you can use a lighter than water or heavier than water organic solvent. So this type of extraction usually takes several hours. So obviously, several systems can be operated and attended in a series, thus allowing multiple samples to be extracted. Okay, typically in this process, in continuous liquid liquid extraction process, typically one liter sample is added to the continuous extractor. This is the picture of a continuous extractor. Okay, then uh, you can adjust the pH if necessary according to the optimized conditions. Then 300 to 500 ml of organic solvent is added to the distilling flask together with several boiling chips. Then the solvent is then boiled by using a water bath and the extraction process is allowed to occur between 18 to 24 hours. So as I mentioned in earlier, uh, in a previous slide, two common version of continuous LLE are present. The first diagrams, okay, the first diagram here shows the solvent used is heavier than water. For example, we use dichloromethane. Okay, it has a greater density compared to the aqueous sample. So the solvent reservoir uh, is heated slowly okay, and converted into vapors which move up and are condensed and the organic solvent is converted again into liquid. Okay, this solvent is heavier than water. Thus, it slowly descends to the bottom together with the analyte of interest in the aqueous samples. So the level of solvent is increased and the corresponding solvent will fall back into the reservoir. In case of a second diagram, the solvent used is lighter than water. For example, we use ethyl acetate. It has lower density compared to aqua sample. So the reservoir is heated slowly and converted into vapor which move up and condense and the organic solvent is converted into 
liquid. So this solvent is then descend through a bubble type funnel, okay, to the bottom of aqueous samples. Since this solvent is lighter than water, it moves up to the top slowly by bringing together the analyte of interest in the water sample. So then the level of solvent increase and transfer back into reservoir. This continue until maximum amount of solute is transferred from aqueous solution to organic solvent. So after completing the extraction process and sufficient cooling time, the boiling plus is detached and solvent evaporation can be conducted before analysis. So I will provide to you a very interesting uh, animation I take from uh, YouTube. So I hope you uh, can make you understand more regarding this two method, uh, heavier than water solvent and lighter than water solvent. This video will show two common versions of liquid liquid extraction are present. The first one is by using heavier than water solvent and the second one is lighter than water solvent. Okay, and now we proceed to the second method of extraction which is known as solid phase extraction or SPE. Okay, solid phase extraction which is sometimes referred to liquid solid extraction. Uh, the liquid is mobile phase, the solid is the stationary phase. It is involved uh, bringing a liquid sample into contact with a solid phase or solvent whereby the analyte is selectively absorbed onto the surface of solid phase. So the solid phase solvent is usually packed into, uh, into a small tube or cartridges. You can see the picture. Okay, cartridges with the system resembling a small liquid chromatography column. Okay, beside the solvent is also available in round flat sheet which can be mounted in a filtration apparatus. So in this case, uh, the solvent resembles that of the commonly used in filter paper. Okay, at first, okay, the procedure of SPE, at first the solvent are wetted and preconditioned. Then the samples containing solvent is forced by pressure or vacuum through the SPE solvent. 
So the analyte of interest should be retained by the solvent in preference to other material present in the samples. So the extraneous material can be washed from the solvent by passing the solvent, SPE solvent, with an appropriate solvent. And subsequently, the analyte of interest can then be eluted from the solvent by using another suitable solvent. So basically, there are four steps of SPE you can see here. First, you need to conditioning the, sam the, the SPE media, and then you uh, add samples, and then you wash the extraneous material, and finally, elute the analyte of interest for analysis. Okay? Okay, method of SPE operation, uh, as I told you in the earlier slide. So, the method of SPE can be divided into four steps, which is A, solvent is wetted and preconditioned. Okay, B, sample applied. Okay, you put the, let's say, river water sample. Okay, you put inside the SPE media. And uh, the analyte of interest will retain by the solvent while some extraneous material are passed through. So, C, uh, the remaining extraneous material is washed off. Uh, we don't want the extraneous material. We only want the uh, analyte of interest. And finally, in the step D, all the analyte is eluted from the solvent and collected for analysis. Okay. The choice of SPE solvent is highly dependent upon the analyte of interest. So, the retentive property of analyte is depend on the type of SPE solvent used. So, generally, SPE solvent can be divided into three classes. Okay, the first one is uh, normal phase, second one is reverse phase, and the third one is ion exchange. So, in reverse phase SPE solvent, Okay, in reverse phase SPE solvent, the interaction of media and analyte, absorber media and analyte, is through hydrophobic interaction. So, in this SPE system, the solvent media is non-polar, while the mobile phase is polar. So, the analyte of interest is usually middle to non-polar compound. So, we can use a reverse phase SPE solvent for a middle to non-polar compound. In normal phase SPE, the interaction of media and analyte is through hydrophilic interaction. So the solvent media is polar and the mobile phase is non-polar. It is reverse from reverse phase system. So normally we use a, a normal phase SPE uh, for polar analyte uh, in a mid to non-polar matrix. Okay. Another uh, type of SPE is ion exchange. It can be used uh, for compounds that are charged when in a solution. So the mechanism is based mainly on the electrostatic attraction of charged functional group on the analyte of interest to the charged group that is bonded to the solvent silica surface. So we will discuss in detail the term of normal phase, reverse phase, ion exchange in the topic of chromatography later. So the most common solvent uh, are based on silica particle with a diameter between 30 to 60 micrometer. So the functional group are bonded uh, to the surface of silenol group. Okay. Uh, what type of functional group? We bond with the silenol group to alter their retentive properties. So, in addition to silica, there are other common solvents uh, based on fluorescyl, alumina, and macroreticular polymers. Okay, the choice of solvent is actually directly influenced the retention, a retentive property of the analyte on the solvent and its subsequent elution. So, it is critical to choose the correct solvent for to elute our sample of interest. So you can see the relative strength for normal and reverse phase solvent in this table. So in case of normal phase uh, SPE, the weakest uh, solvent is hexane. Meanwhile, the strongest solvent is water. So in contrast to normal phase, reverse phase uh, solvent, the strongest one is hexane. Meanwhile, the uh, weakest is water.
Okay, this is uh, the typical procedure of SPE. I hope this diagram could help the student to understand the SPE process. Uh, I also attach here uh, some interesting video that I download from YouTube to make uh, you understand more regarding this SPE procedure. This video will show you the step uh, in SPE. First one is condition. The second one is equilibrate. The third one is load, load the sample. The fourth step is wash. And the final step is mute. So another sample preparation method for liquid sample for organic analysis is solid phase micro extraction or known as SPME. Okay, uh, solid phase micro extraction. SPMB is a solvent-free sample preparation technology that is uh, fast, economical, and versatile. Okay, SPMB is the process whereby an analyte is absorbed onto the surface of coated silica fiber as a method of concentration. So this is followed by desorption of the analyte into a suitable instrument, uh, for example, GC for separation and quantitation. So, uh, the partitioning of analyte between the aqueous sample and a stationary phase is the main principal operation of SPMB. So, you can see the schematic diagram of SPMB device. Okay, the SPMB device consists of a fused silica fiber. Okay, connected to a stainless steel tube for mechanical strength. And this assembly is mounted within the shrink barrel. Okay, during the SPME process, the fiber is withdrawn into the shrimp barrel and then inserted into our sample containing wires. So at this point, the fiber is exposed to the analyte by pressing down the plunger for a pre-specific time. So after this predetermined time interval, the fiber is withdrawn back into its protective shrink barrel and withdrawn from the sample wire. So the SPME device is then inserted into hot injector of a GC and the fiber exposed for a pre-specific time. So the heat of the injector dissolves the analyte from the fiber prior to GC separation and detection. So SPME can be carried out either manually or by using an auto sampler. So this is the uh, typical or simplified procedure for SPME. Okay, I also uh, attach here two interesting video of SPME. One is manual SPME method and another one is automatic SPME method. So I hope it will help you to understand this SPME uh, method. Okay. Manual SPME sampling analysis. Beginners should consider first using a manual SPME fiber and holder. The manual system allows the analyst to optimize the extraction process by evaluating different fibers and extraction conditions in a consistent manner. Begin the extraction process by placing the sample into the vial puck on the hot plate. The vial puck allows users to easily index the vial to begin sample agitation. Insert the holder into the sampling stand passing the needle through the septum that seals the sample vial. Depress the plunger down to expose the fiber to the sample liquid or headspace above the sample. Start the timing of exposure of the SPME fiber for reproducible extractions. After a predetermined time, the SPME fiber is retracted into the protective needle and transferred to the GC for analysis. Inject the SPME fiber into the GC injection port where the collected organics are quickly transferred to the GC column by heating the fiber. 
After the thermal transfer of analytes is completed, the fiber is removed and inserted in the next sample vial for extraction. The Gerstel multipurpose sampler completely automates solid phase microextraction, commonly called SPME. When performing the SPME technique using a standard split splitless inlet, the Gerstel multipurpose sampler transports the sample vial to the heated agitator. Once there, the sample is incubated to establish thermodynamic equilibrium between the headspace above the sample and the sample itself. The SPME fiber assembly is then inserted into the headspace of the vial and the fiber is exposed. Volatile analytes are then concentrated onto the coating of the SPME fiber. The fiber is moved to and inserted into the inlet where the fiber is exposed and the analytes are desorbed from the fiber into the inlet and onto the GC column. After analysis, the sample is returned to the tray and the MPS starts the next sample in For summary, the presence of trace organic or in natural and wastewater can often cause a problem in terms of selected analytical technique. So it's hard for us which method is suitable for this type of sample. So in order to be able to quantify the concentration of trace organic in echo sample, appropriate method of pre-concentration therefore need to be selected. So uh, this lesson uh, has summarized the main method available. The traditional approach has utilized liquid-liquid extraction. Okay, however, since 1970, solid phase extraction SPE, has become increasingly popular, particularly as it is possible to automate the procedure. Okay, most recently, in 1990, uh, the use of solid phase micro extraction has offered an alternative approach to pre concentration. However, it is uh, SPME, it is not foreseen that SPME will replace the solid phase extraction SPE, but rather than offer an alternative method. Uh, which is portable and hence can be applied outside the laboratory. So I think that's all for this time. This is my references. So thank you very much. In the next lecture, I will talk about sample preparation for volatile organic compound. So be prepared. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you and see you again. Bye.